there, it's Polly here. And uh, yes, <laughs> back in the studio, complete with unicorn juice. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been looking at, at some solo games lately because solo games, um, well, they kind of really took off over COVID and uh, solo games are uh, interesting. There's some that I took traveling with me. There's some that I didn't. There's some brilliant ones that I didn't. Here's one that I didn't. And you can see why I didn't. Um, <laughs> It's, it's big, but love this, love this, love this, love this. Keep up the fire. The Boxer Rebellion. Uh, yes, it's the Hong Kong martial arts film that no one was, has ever made. Um, so, solid box. And this is, for those of you who aren't familiar um, with the conflict, this is a game set in the Boxer Rebellion, 1900-1901. Specifically, uh, the siege of the legations in um, well, then Peking, now Beijing. So what happened is um, there was a <sighs> colonial powers had come into China and were essentially at gunpoint forcing uh, concessions um, on the imperial Chinese, um, stripping away um, trade monopolies that the crown had always kept to itself. Um, uh, essentially, like the British saying, um, uh, essentially, they fought an opium war and said, yes, we have the right to trade opium to your citizens and get them hooked. Um, etc you know nasty stuff but in beijing there was a um an area the legation compound which had everybody's um embassies and each of these embassies had um a couple of companies of troops for security purposes so there were the russians there were uh italians austrians japanese uh good old british french um and uh, the Americans, for those of you who've seen the um, movie 55 Days in Peking, that's what this is about. Charlton Heston and so on. And probably the most, it's probably the most obscene bit of yellow face you'll, you'll ever see. Is like, I, I, they, they decided to do this thing about this war in China and basically put no Chinese people in it. They just sort of like badly dressed up British and American actors and said, there, you know, now you're Chinese. Oy. But. Stealing stuff nonetheless. And keep up the fire is sort of one of the things that one of the American officers sort of said. Um, fair enough. Um, so, what happens is there's a group called the Righteous, the Society of Righteous Harmonious Fists. Basically, um, Kung Fu societies. This was a very mystic um, Chinese martial arts society who believed that their martial arts powers allowed them to be resistant, um, you know, immune to bullets if you're a true believer, etc., etc., etc. Uh, that didn't work out so well for them. Um, but, of course, these guys just aren't using ooh, ooh, punch punch. No, they're using like halberds and swords and sabers and all those cool martial arts stuff. And um, they basically leapt in and um, told the government, if you won't get rid of um, these horrible foreigners, we will. Uh, it became a mass movement and it kind of carried a lot of the nobility with it. So the, um, the Imperial Chinese army joins in. And yes, kill the foreigners, kill the, kill the beast, kill the beast. So what happens is um, they besiege that legation. So you've got these different companies of different nationalities of troops trying to fortify that area. And they've got all the foreign you know, women and children and um, you know, pack animals and goldfish and uh, canary birds and uh, all the other things that they don't want to, you know, horribly killed by righteous harmonious fists. They've got all that there, uh, which they're trying to defend. Meanwhile, at the coast, um, a relief force was organized um essentially um the different navies of the colonial powers they shelled all the crap out of the uh, forts at taku and uh yahoo stormed those and then made these uh columns a lot of them were sailors from um various ships but also they did get some um military units in there so you know there's everything from indian lancers to um you know japanese infantry to um french cavalry to um, american marines and they're trying to get inland to essentially lift the siege and save all these people so this game is a game in two simultaneously played parts you're trying to save everyone in that legation area you hold off these hordes that are coming and attacking you and you're trying to get that relief column through so you've got these two things to keep track of love it so there's two types of um chinese unit and the uh, the chinese are all run by the the game's ai you are playing um colonial people so there's uh, harmonious fists harmonious fists tend to do um they they're vulnerable to being shot because they tend to pack in fairly close and um, make beautiful targets on the other hand uh if they get in hand to hand um they are fairly murderous um and the actual um 
Manchu dynasty's troops, uh, and um, they're um, they 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 do have uh, some rifles, they do have muskets, they do have you know this sort of thing. So you know they can they can uh, they they're not so cool in uh, close combat, but you know they're not so vulnerable to being shot. Fair enough. In the legations, you've got essentially four zones north south east west these are the walls and you've got eight different um companies that can hold these one for each nation now each nation has special abilities so the british are quite good at um fighting uh, putting a ton of casualties on people who have gotten to hand-to-hand -hand distance the, the mad minute um others are quite get a bonus firing out at long range the japanese take less damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat than other groups um the russians don't seem to be particularly good but they do have rifles and there's also the international gun uh, which i love it what happened is they basically found the barrel of a gun which was um you know from one nation um i think it was just down a well somewhere and they found a carriage from another old gun and they found shells from a third nation's gun that weren't quite the correct caliber they fitted kind of sort of so they kind of made this horrendous frankenstein gun so that's another asset that you've got now when it is your um colonial guy's turn what happens is uh you get the legation turn first and um you've got a set number of actions and you've got different card decks to draw from um so you draw from the card decks that will give you the number of actions that you can do and any special stuff that you can do you can spend the actions on fortifying a section of wall or doing an action such as firing volleys at one of these incoming um, um, groups of um, um, attackers coming towards you, etc. Um, now, firing at people at long range um, sometimes is a card that allows you to drive them back, but often these guys just keep on coming. When they get into close range, you're now in essentially hand-to-hand -hand combat it's actually a mix of hand-to-hand -hand and really close street fighting some of these areas are streets that they're in and units fighting in streets actually take more casualties because there's lots of alleys and things um so that's a difficult area you probably want to hold that with the japanese who'll take less hand-to-hand -hand combat damage and maybe pair them up with the british who will do more damage to your opponents ah so pairing the abilities of your companies is really important but when you get to you're know, rolling to hit at the longer ranges and if you hit you then roll a dice and that's the amount of damage which comes off the strength of the incoming guys however if you get into hand-to-hand -hand combat you roll one dice you get bonuses so if he's in if you're fighting in the streets etc and, and whatever that's the damage that you take off your opponent but that same dice that you rolled is also the damage your opponent takes off you. Yeah. However, the level of fortification that you've got actually absorbs some of that damage. Um, so each you can the first hit that any given unit takes, you can take fortification rather than lowering the strength of one of your defending um, colonial companies. You split the damage as evenly as you can. So let's say you took four damage from you know, China. You got like um, Japanese and British holding the line. Good. Well, what happens is, um, well, one point comes a fortification, and then you take one point off the British. One point comes a fortification, you take one point off the Japanese. Is how that works. You can only take like one point off fortification at a time. So that's the. So the funny thing is, uh, if you really want to kill those guys that are raging in, you're praying to roll the six. But on the other hand, that's going to cause you damage because it's been a frenzied, frenzied fight. A long, drawn out combat against them where you're rolling really low dice. Um, you should be able to uh, kind of wear that on the fortifications and maybe and maybe your bonuses for being so cool um and um but it'll take longer and more of these guys will be thundering in and reinforcing that line so um so cool anyway once you've done all that um there is a um relief army turn and that's that's got a really interesting thing what you can do is as the relief army You've got actions again now you can spend those on attacking or you can spend those on becoming stronger gathering in reinforcements you're know, bringing more guys off the fleet and so you're staying in place to swell your numbers and whatever or you can m try and make yourself faster so you're going to have to balance I mean, bashing your way through um increasing your speed or increasing your strength so that you can you know speed through or 
bash your way through. Uh, you've got some interesting choices to make there. So yeah, some, some nice resource management. Um, again, you've got a deck of cards to draw on for things that happen in that turn. The Chinese have a um, series of cards that they draw, and it's that basically tells you numbers and reinforcements that are coming in and any special um, uh, events that happen there. When the last card is sort of turned over, um, game's over, and you check your victories. Has your and and they've got some nice little historical notes about what might happen. So if the Chinese forces actually win an overwhelming victory, this actually kind of really screws up the colonial powers because not only do they kind of lose footing in Asia, but a lot of other colonial rebellions start to echo out. As you see, you can actually fight these bastards. Um, so things tend to bog down. Um, if it's a, a sort of a strong but not overwhelming victory then um, for the Chinese, then uh, there's a long protracted war in China and so on, which draws people in and there's some recriminations and that you can get like World War One starting early um, and or minor wars between different um, people within the um, so, you know, the British go to war against the Germans in, in Africa um, and these sorts of things. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's got some nice uh, ideas in there. Uh, it's a very sturdy uh, game. I mean, look, you've got um, you've got um, the, the rules aren't um, overwhelming. Uh, your calendars, uh, you've got some really nice little storage trays, uh, and you have, you know, good solid uh, fold-out boards. Um, so, yeah, it's a very robust game, and that is why it wasn't portable when I travelled. Um, so this is not a um, take-it-on-holiday thing. It's definitely a, yahoo, keep it in the room, and um, we're going to play this thing um, for fun. But um, it's a terrific little piece of game design. Um, the fact that you're playing like two games at once, so oh, what are you spending your effort in? Are you trying to like really slow down those guys attacking the legations? Um, or are you going to really focus on trying to speed the relief column towards them? Are you building up forces for the release column to bully your way through? Or are you going to try and rush your way past the blocking Chinese forces before they can build those up? To an extent that they're really, really going to block you by, you know, making fortifications and this sort of thing. So some really nice little choices. Uh, great piece of work. Um, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. Uh, it's it's a good solo game. Uh, excellent replay value because you've got quite large decks and you don't dish out all of the cards. So um, yeah, so you can come back to this again and again. I played a couple of games of it now. Um, I've actually won. I've actually got a. One overwhelming European victory, and one was like, nah, you know, we kind of we had to we had to make a treaty with the Chinese, and um, so uh, I think we, I, I think we I think we got to the um, I think we got World War One starting in um, 1909 or something weird like that. Uh, so anyway, yes, take a look at them. Uh, it's a great set of um, great great little box game, and um, yeah, as far as solo games go, uh, it's a winner. All right, um, yeah, if you like the videos, by all means, uh, subscribe, like, find me on Patreon, and uh, yeah, keep rolling the dice. <laughs> Cheers, bye!